This is more than you expect. Hey guys, today I am super excited because I'm going to show you what the M5 Stack Unit V2 is all about. It's a super cool device. Now, if you watch me for some time, you've probably seen a device like this from M5 Stack, but unlike the past device, the M5 Stick C Plus that I've um, reviewed and told you how you could use it in this video, this isn't ESP32 based. Inside, there's a proper computer. You have Cortex A7 1.2 GHz dual core processor with 128 gigs of RAM and storage of 512. Uh, megabytes. And apart from the camera, you've got a separate core for AI processing, which means this little baby is capable of AI vision. And that means it will do all the calculations for you and all you have to do is just grab that data and send it to your computer for, well, to use it. I didn't actually believe that all the processing is done inside this tiny little thumb-sized device. And while there are older and more powerful solutions for AI and vision, well, you have to give it to the M5 stack. This is probably one of the most compact ones and also one of the simplest ones to use. Like, I'll show you how simple it is to get started with AI vision. But first, as usual, let's take a closer look at the device. It's exactly the same form factor as previously mentioned M5 stick. C plus. You will see a familiar groove connector at the bottom accompanied by a USB Type-C for connectivity. This port will also act as your network card as this is how the device sends the data from its computer to uh, whatever computer you're going to use to process that data. There is also integrated card where you can store the pictures and an additional button that you can use. Despite such a small size, you can even find a fan in there which keeps entire device cool. Inside you'll also find two different adapters, one to uh, connect this to a tripod and the second one to make it compatible with Lego blocks, which opens a lot of interesting opportunities. M5 Stack asks for $75 for this device and to be honest, it's not that much considering what the device can offer you. I've said before that it's super easy to get into the computer vision and M5 stack delivers in that field again. Literally, all you have to do is connect this via USB Type-C, uh, install driver if you don't have one, and then you'll be able to open a web browser window and start, well, seeing what the device is seeing. You'll be given 12 predefined modes that you can use to explore the capability and look up what kind of payloads you would receive on the other end. The payloads are being sent over the serial and in the further updates you will also enable Wi-Fi communication with this device so you will be able to stream that data wirelessly and enable AI, well, from afar. But if that's not enough then you can take upon the task itself thanks to the online tool to actually generate the model visions for that device. But before I'm going to show you how to do it, I've noticed that the predefined recognition models support car recognition, so let's take it for a ride. So I thought it's going to be a cool idea to actually take the camera for a drive because, well, the default algorithm can recognize cars and I'm really interested how it's going to work in a real life scenario. And I know it's not going to be strong enough to be a main computer behind autonomous driving, but let's face it, it's fun anyway. Now let's go and find some cars. It's Sunday, so it's gonna be slightly more difficult than usual. As you can see, it won't be competing with autopilot anytime soon. However, I was quite impressed with how actually well it did it. And even the data stream wasn't that choppy. So kudos to Unit V2. Now that you have an idea how this thing works, let's try to teach it something new. In order to train this with a custom recognition model, uh, you have to put some elbow grease. Now, you have to submit a 
minimum of 30 pictures of the object you're going to train. Now my advice is to use a similar resolution uh, of the images that you're going to be recognizing with the camera. Uh, that way your detection settings can be much more accurate. Now after a while I've tagged all the pictures and annotating them and selected the objects I wanted to train, in this case M5 stick C+. And then after 10 minutes or so I had a ready model to upload into the device. Now in my experience changing that file name caused the device to reject the file so I stick to original name and uploaded the training model. And as you can see the device was recognized even though my pictures were probably way too good for the uh, training purposes. I should have rescaled the pictures to make them look a little bit more like what this camera would see. There's one more thing I should mention which is Jupyter Notebook or IDE. This is a cross between an online notebook and uh, development environment which you can access by switching a website generated by this small device. The idea being that you can access or generate new scripts for this device and change the behavior of the camera and how it, it interacts with environment. Now it's probably not the best way to program this thing, however for quick edits it's very handy. There is probably a million and one ideas of how you can use this in a different automation projects. One of the more obvious being probably a smart doorbell in which you can recognize people, recognize faces, but also if you train it well enough you could possibly recognize couriers or mailmen. So if you're interested in AI and computer vision you probably want to stick around because in one of my next projects I'll be using this and showing you from well the start to finish how to train the app and use it for custom automation scenarios. So I really hope that you enjoyed that quick look at M5 Stack Unit V2. Big thanks to M5 Stack for sending me this unit so I could take a quick look. And if you're interested in it, in the description of this video you're gonna find a little bit more information about the unit on my website and the links where you can purchase it. Now because I do not have a posting schedule and I have a couple of more M5 Stack new boards to cover, if you really like what you see you probably want to consider doing all that YouTube stuff to, you know, follow me, subscribe, etc. Now it's the best if you follow me on any given social media so you can interact with me and, well, ask the questions because the YouTube comments section recently is not being very reliable. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.